My name is Pierce Pallon, and I'm an engineer and chemist with ITW Contamination Control. And today we're going to speak a little bit about ultrasonic cleaning. How does ultrasonics work? These units have built-in transducers that will transmit waves, uh, sonic waves at various frequencies. When you are buying a model or looking at purchasing one, you need to get with the equipment manufacturer and explain what you're cleaning, how you're cleaning it, what you're cleaning with. They can help you choose the size of a transducer that you will be purchasing. So the way this works is you have a solvent inside here and that transducer will transmit sonic waves at a particular frequency. This is 40 kilohertz in this unit right here. And as those waves go through, and hit your part, the waves, the, the solvent, or whatever you're using in there, will absorb that energy from the sonic waves. And what that does is that loosens the molecular cohesive forces, and it forms a void in there. And as that void absorbs more energy, it grows and grows until eventually it collapses on itself. It's called implosion. And at the moment of implosion, there is so much pressure and, and heat that is released in little microscopic areas because of all these voids or bubbles that are in there. And those, those intense little points of heat and pressure is what helps clean along with the solvent action of it. That's usually with your lower frequency transducers. As you increase your, your transducer frequency with the different units, those higher frequencies, even though you still have those implosions, those go less and less, and they start transitioning into what they call acoustic streaming. And so in, rather than the implosions, it's back and forth actions. It's almost like a little micro scrubbing action. And that's where you want to use those with your more delicate parts, your very intricately machined parts, and areas that you have to get into to get all the little nooks and crannies clean. The higher frequencies are generally for your sensitive components and for your more precision cleaning. Any additional heat input will make it easier to clean that part just because the surface tension lowers of your solvents and or your, your mixtures and it just makes it easier to clean. Now that said, you have to be very careful about applying heat to some solvents because they do obviously release vapors. There can be a flashpoint involved. So really know what you're doing and understand the solvent. If you're using a flammable solvent or something that is combustible, we recommend never, never, never applying any additional heat because the material will get warm on its own just from the ultrasonic action. So be extremely careful with that. If you're using aqueous solutions, then obviously that's not an issue. But they're all adjustable. You can adjust your time input, your temperature input, and also this as a separate degassing unit. Now what degassing does, and especially if you're using solvent mixes, it allows that, that solvent to degas any, any entrained vapors that it may have absorbed, and it just equilibrates it. So even if it doesn't have a separate setting, allow it to, to run a few minutes to completely degas before you enter the part. Now, on this particular unit, and almost any particular unit, you've got your solvent mixture or your, your aqueous mixture in here. This is the, the cleaning bath where all of the cleaning is taking place. It can be directly where you put your parts in this bath, or what many people do, especially with smaller parts, is they'll do what they call an indirect method or uh, what's also considered as a double boiler. It's like you have a pan inside of a pan and you'll put your small parts, say, with your in a beaker with your actual solvent, but your bath is filled with water. We'll set our time for five minutes now we'll have our temperature set. Right now it's at 25 degrees, but we're going to set it at 43 C. And then the, 
the degas on this particular unit, we always leave it at one. Now, in this particular case, we're going to do the indirect method rather than dropping a small part in the large bath. So we've got our solvent here in the beaker. I'm going to introduce the part into the beaker. So now it's there. Turn this on and it's going. So it's running and we'll just introduce this with the part into there. And we'll put our lid on and then it'll count down the time. So if you're running parts over and over in the same solvent, okay, it may get it clean, but then you're, drag you're dragging it right back up through dirty solvent as you remove the part. So we always recommend a separate final rinse after you remove the part with the same cleaning material that you're using in your unit. We'll turn this unit off and we'll stop the cycle. And we'll remove the part, obviously let it cool for a moment. So all we're doing here is we're going to take a little bit of the same IPA and then just rinse the unit. There are various drying methods. You can either just let it set out and flash off at room temperature, or if available, you can put it in a lab oven and accelerate that drying time with the heat from the oven. This was a short and sweet demonstration here, but if you have any questions at all about general operation of an ultrasonic unit, uh, some of the products that may be used uh, that we carry that can be used in the ultrasonic, any types of process that we can help describe for you or help you set up, please get in touch with us uh, here at ITW.